Question two, part one. Describe the difference between the structure of a triglyceride and the structure of a phospholipid. So let's think about their structures. So I'm just going to draw a simplified version. So these are the glycerol molecules. Um, let's say this is a phospholipid and this is a triglyceride. So both of these involve a glycerol molecule with some fatty acids attached. So in a triglyceride, there are three fatty acids attached. And in a phospholipid, there are only two fatty acids attached. But instead of the third one, instead, there's a phosphate group. So here's how we're going to phrase our answer. So let's have a look at the mark scheme to confirm that. There we go. In phospholipids, one fatty acid is replaced by phosphate. And note that they haven't let you have the mark for phosphorus. You have to say a phosphate or a phosphate group. Okay, in the next part, describe how you would test for the presence of a lipid in a sample of food. So this should be fairly straightforward. It's just the emulsion test. And let's have a look at the mark scheme for that. So really important here is that you get them the right way round. They won't let you have them if they're in the incorrect sequence. In this last part, they've given you a small paragraph about saturated fatty acids being in, um, in your diet and obesity. And I'll let you read that yourself. But the question is, describe how a saturated fatty acid is different from an unsaturated fatty acid. And the clue's in the name. If you think about a saturated sponge, that means it's full with water. So it's exactly the same, except a saturated fatty acid is full with hydrogen. So I'll show you what that would look like. So you can see each of these carbons are bonded to a hydrogen. And this is a saturated fatty acid. How about an unsaturated fatty acid? So the difference here is that there's one or more carbon-carbon double bond. And this means that not all of them are saturated with hydrogen. So how are we going to phrase our answer? Let's have a look at the mark scheme for that. And they've phrased it pretty much exactly the same here. Okay, in the next part, we've been given a figure showing the structure of a fat substitute. This fat substitute cannot be digested in the gut by lipase. Suggest why. So let's analyse the question a little bit. Well, what do we know about lipase? Lipase is an enzyme. It would normally digest lipids. Whereas they've given us a fat substitute here. So it's going to be like a lipid. We can see that it's got fatty acids, but what's this propene glycol? And it's just slightly different. So why can this fat substitute not be digested in the gut by lipase? In order to get the marks of this question, you need to identify what topic are they testing your knowledge of. And this is something that you quite often have to do, which I mentioned earlier. So they're actually testing your knowledge of enzymes. So what are some key words that we can think of to do with enzymes? Well, active site, enzyme substrate complex, and I'll just leave it there for now. So what it is, is it's the fact that this is a different shape. So Perhaps it can't bind to the active site and therefore it can't form an enzyme substrate complex and actually catalyse the reaction. Therefore, it's not going to be digested. So this is how you would phrase your answer. So hopefully you can see there, they're really just testing your knowledge of enzymes. And moving on to the final part. This fat substitute is a lipid. Despite being a lipid, it cannot cross the cell surface membranes of cells lining the gut. Suggest why. 
So again, what's it testing your knowledge of? Well, it's testing your knowledge of transport across cell membranes. So to understand why it can't cross the cell surface membrane, to just suggest something, so there might be a few possible options here, we need to think about, well, in what situations can things cross cell surface membranes? So things that can cross cell membranes um, are things that are small and things that are nonpolar. So it's going to be the opposite if it can't. So it may be large or it may be polar, for example. So let's have a look at the mark scheme. Oh, and the mark scheme for the one before. You can see the mark scheme, the one before, that's just what we wrote. Um, and this one, there are a few options, too large, polar, hydrophilic, and there we have it.